In a discectomy case, and when you have a little bit more experience, you can actually make tiny, only two millimeter holes, two, three millimeter holes into the yellow ligament, right over the targeted pathology. And you can actually leave all of the rest of the yellow ligament intact. In case you are doing an over the top decompression, however, then the yellow ligament is one of the main components of our pathology and it therefore needs to be removed completely. And you can do so by either cutting through the yellow ligament centrally with our scissors, as we have described in our previous chapter on endoscopic discectomy. And you can then continue uh, your yellow ligament resection from here on. This is, however, not my preferred strategy in spinal stenosis. In the vast majority of spinal stenosis cases, I actually just extend my decompression cranially until uh, we reach the insertion of the yellow ligament right underneath the cranial lamina, and then I detach the yellow ligament uh, there, uh, from there caudally. And you can see during the surgery that you are actually getting closer to this cranial insertion site as the yellow ligament will become thinner and thinner gradually uh, in this area. From here on, you can then pull the ligament caudally and then you can start to remove it with either sharp scissors or also with uh, Kerenson punches. Just make sure, again, that you resect the yellow ligament layer by layer. Don't just cut a hole in one direction. And by doing so, you can first decompress the central spinal canal and then later on go more laterally to decompress the lateral recess. I recommend that you use the bipolar uh, in, during those steps also. This will help you to clearly identify the layers, the different layers, and it will help you to make sure that you are working in the right plane and just to make sure that you are separating any potential adhesions that may be there between the dura and the yellow ligament. So for this purpose, I actually prefer the bipolar over the dissector to get rid of any possible adhesions. And this is because the tip of the bipolar is round and it's therefore blunt. And I also prefer it because the bipolar is rather flexible. It's a flexible instrument. The dissector is much more rigid and therefore somewhat sharper. So for those purposes, I actually prefer to use the bipolar to get rid of any possible adhesions. So same as in microsurgery, when you are taking your bites, when you remove a uh, yellow ligament or you want to remove bone with your kerenzons, what you should do is you take a bite, but you, before you take a bite, you actually lift off slightly the kerenzon away from the dura before you take your bite. So once you have done the central and the ipsilateral recess decompression, the next important thing that you must make sure is that you, caudally you have fully decompressed the exiting nerve root. And make sure that there are no more bony spikes or any other structures uh, in contact with the nerve. This is very important to confirm here uh, that the ipsilateral nerve root has been fully decompressed. You should see it and you should be able to mobilize it freely and then you know you've done the job on the ipsilateral side. Once we've done that, then we start to go over the top to the contralateral side, which actually with a little bit of experience is fairly easy to do. You simply tilt the endoscope and then you start going to the contralateral side and which will help you to get a view over the top into the contralateral recess. Again, please use the bipolar first to separate any possible adhesions between the dura and the yellow ligament. Um, remove any fat tissues just to make sure that you have clearly identified all of the anatomic structures. Once you've done that, you can now start to resect the contralateral yellow ligament with scissors, for example. This is actually quite an elegant part of the surgery because you can take small bites and those small bites are immediately uh, washed out uh, with the irrigation system, which is nice for you as a surgeon. For the majority, however, you will resect uh, the yellow ligament with Kerenson rogers. And again, here, please make sure that you use the 25 degree angled optics of your endoscope 
So by rotating it so that you can see the tip of your sharp instruments at all times and so that you exactly know where you are taking your bites. Please also make sure that once you have reached the contralateral recess that you don't accidentally put any pressure with the Kerenzan rongeurs on the contralaterally exiting nerve root. This is important, especially for beginners, so careful not to squeeze down with your instruments on the contralateral nerve. And then these steps should be repeated until you can fully see that the contralateral neural structures have been fully decompressed. You may encounter situations where the lamina and the spinous process prevent you from going far enough contralaterally uh, to the other side. And in these cases, you may have to use the endoscopic high-speed burr in order to carefully resect the bone in this area, right underneath the spinous process in the area of the lamina, so that you can actually reach far enough contralaterally. You should only do this as much as needed because sometimes there may be more bleedings, uh, especially in this area of the cancellous bone. But once you have done that, it will be easier, it will actually be much easier for you to reach over the top now and you can now go contralaterally and remove any remaining structures that still need to be uh, decompressed. Finally, depending on the intraoperative circumstances, you may have to extend that contralateral bony recess uh, decompression. And in those cases, you may have to use the high-speed burr in this area. And especially in this area, we will be working in very, very close proximity to the neural structures with our very sharp burrs. So again, make sure that by turning the endoscope, you can see the sharp side of the high-speed burr at all times and make sure that it's not in contact uh, with the neural structures. Whilst doing so, the back shield of the burr should also safely protect you against the dura and then you know that you're safe. Once you've taken all these steps, you will be able to achieve a nice over-the-top decompression and then your final inspection will show that you have nicely decompressed centrally and the recesses on both sides.